Hello there, uh, this is where we left off and uh, this is part 9 of our training series on how to make a sewer tunnel in Blender 2.8. Uh, so yeah, uh, so what we want to make is a weight map uh, for this uh, for this image, uh, for this uh, trench. Uh, because we want to have a sewer level uh, for this because you would imagine that uh, as the sewer is flowing, flowing, it's not over flooding uh, this trench. It's uh, maybe this level is about here. So let's see how we can make uh, this level a bit darker and uh, maybe more reflective uh, from the other surfaces from the other yeah, areas of the concrete so we are still going to use the same shader uh, you can create another shader and uh, maybe make it make uh, the color map a bit uh, darker using maybe uh, curves and then assign uh, that uh, to let me select a loop here assign uh, that to to these faces and uh, that would work. What I'm saying is that uh, you just create a new material here, maybe give it a darker color and assign it to that. But uh, it doesn't look professional, so I'll just do it how I want to do it. So uh, we're going to use a texture uh, color gradient and uh, to create a mask uh, for our wet areas or sewer level. So let's go in and uh, add a gradient. So go under texture, gradient texture, and now we can add a color ramp to control the gradient. So connect uh, this to this, and uh, if we preview this, you can see what we have. Let me turn on my screen keys. Again, if you know everything I'm doing here and you don't want to watch the step-by-step -step tutorial, me explaining uh, what a car ramp node is if you already know this I, I'm going to upload the time lapse version of this so that you can just see me do uh, whatever I'm doing uh, without uh, the, me explaining uh, every single bit uh, that I'm doing here that you might already know and uh, it will be at a, a faster pace I think I'm speed I will speed I'll be speeding up uh, the time lapse to about two times or three times uh, the normal speed so yeah let's continue with this so we want this gradient because it's flowing from this side to this side I want it to flow from up, uh, from down to up, so that, until our level here. So to do that, we we need uh, to add texture coordinate mapping that will enable us to rotate our gradient uh, to make it go from down to up. So let's add an input uh, texture coordinate and then another uh, node uh, that is under vector mapping. Now we just need to connect generated are uh, the generated the generated texture coordinates or the uv coordinates whatever you want to use uh, but i think generated and uv or object are much easier so then connect this to uh, the vector input there and uh, now we just need to play around with the rotation until we get the right rotation so let's try 90 for the x uh, we can see that nothing is happening there let's try Let's try 90 for the Y. Yeah, and you can see that uh, our gradient is coming from, from the bottom uh, to up here. And uh, it's giving us some nice details there. Uh, if you have some good bumps in your mesh, say like this. That are coming out. You can have some good details in your trench. So, um, let's add so but uh this would be really low for our sewer so for our sewage so let's bring this up a bit you can see how the sewage level increases as i move this so i want to keep this there just as a, a rock maybe that fall into into our sewer but uh, if you want to add more uh stuff like that you can simply just add a mesh say so let's say add this monkey head where is it so imagine this is a a brick uh, that fall into our sewer so something like that put it around there if you want it to be affected uh, by the uh, by the grad this sewer level because right now you can see it's not really getting affected it's staying uh, the level is still there 
uh, because that's just uh, the intersection. But uh, if you want it to be affected by the sewer level, like uh, how you see uh, this kind, this thing is being this uh, vertex is being affected as the sewer level rises, uh, that is also getting covered as well. You just join this to this mesh. So Control J. Okay, we are running into an issue here. Let me see what's going on. So join this to this. Should it do that? But uh, let me see what's going on. Huh. For some reason, it's kind of. Uh, I think the position of the array. When we add another object, uh, the position of the array is affected. Oh, I, re I, I think I know what, I, why, what is causing that. Uh, so, so when we add uh, this object here to this position, it's kind of changing the array position, the array offset, uh, because I mean, if you want it to, be, to stay in this area, you just first turn off uh, the array and turn off uh, the curve so that you know the correct position of your mesh and then move the object and the mesh to that position and then join it to that you can see that you can see that uh, our mesh is there now we can move it to any position we want maybe even rotate it just a bit so that it's not too obvious and now if we bring back the array and then uh, the curve you can see that uh, everything is as expected and uh, now the sewer level also affects uh, the that mesh so that's how you handle that uh, so since we have our sewer level now we need to make uh, this mask affect how dark uh, this shader looks so Right now, if we look at uh, our curve, our, sorry, our texture, our color color texture, you can see this is what we want. But I want uh, the mask to kind of make these areas a bit darker. So what I'm going to do is add, uh, let me see, let me add a color. Let me add, a, let me add a color RGB curves. Uh, connect uh, the color map to the color, and uh, let's preview this. And see this is what we want but I want it to be a bit darker like this uh, the problem is that uh, now we are darkening the entire texture uh, instead of the areas that we want but uh, since we have this mask we can use that to tell blender which parts we want to be darker and uh, so the way we do that you add a mix RGB node and uh, you can connect uh, you can connect the input from this before it's darkened into let's connect it to the top color and then this the bottom color so if we preview this node you can see if we slide to the value one we are seeing the uh, we are seeing the bottom color with the rgb curves if we slide it to zero we are only seeing uh, the uh, this one without the rgb curves uh, but uh, we can use the color ramp as our factor which is our mask as our factor input here and uh, it will tell blender uh, that uh, let uh, the white areas uh, show color one and the black areas show color, color two. So if we connect this to our factor and preview this, you can see that uh, uh, now we have it uh, the other way around. Uh, our white areas are darker and the, so we, can, we just need to switch these colors and see how this is becoming a bit darker. And uh, I think we also need to make uh, these areas a bit lighter. Let me preview the, the material. So we need to connect this as our final base color, like that. And I think that's good enough. But uh, if you want to make uh, the sewer level a bit more reflective and uh, this area a, li a little bit less reflective, uh, we can use uh, this uh, mask uh, to kind of add. Let's just do, let me see if I can do this like this. So if I connect this here, 
I can use the mask to connect to this here. And you can see that, uh, let me change this to multiply. I didn't do, do this for my previous, uh, for the original part, but I'm just playing around to see if I can get this right. So I think we can do this. So if we, you can create a, a blend mode a blend node and then change the color to multiply uh, so that you can change you can add a little bit of black in uh, areas you want to be more reflective like that but uh, we just need to switch these colors around i think and uh, make this actually we need this like this but uh, we need to invert uh, the mask so color invert to invert the mask now we can make it more reflective by just by multiplying another color to the texture like that but we can also change the overall reflectiveness of our mesh like that so now if we connect this back to the roughness you can see this is becoming more reflective uh, than the other areas and uh, if you want to reduce on the increase the roughness you can see so this area is a bit rough but uh, this here is a bit too wet uh, so if you want you just increase reduce play around with color to there to make it more reflective or less reflective so i think around here is good enough again i didn't do this for uh, the original part but i think uh, this is an interesting part to add in uh, I think the other thing that I did for the sewer, for the sewer trench was add some amid occlusion. I can see it makes uh, those areas a bit darker. Uh, but uh, if you want them to be even more darker, you just add an input ambient occlusion. And uh, if you preview the ambient occlusion node, you can see how uh, the corner areas are a bit darker. And uh, you can add a convert uh, math power node, change the operation to power. To make the ambient the ambient occlusion a bit uh, a little bit more darker, and uh, you can change you, know, you can multiply this over the over the final uh, base color. So you just add a color, mix RGB. And instead of multiplying that, let's just connect this to the color one, so that we have this and. Uh, connect uh, the ambient occlusion to color two. So, but then change, add another mix RGB here, color, mix RGB. If we preview this node, I uh, can change this to, you know, instead of doing that, because I think that's uh, a bit, will be a bit confused, confusing. Uh, let's just use a car ramp here. So convert color ramp. And uh, we're going to change the dark areas into a greenish color. And so that will be something like moss, as, uh, moss or algae growing around uh, those corners. And uh, now we can blend this on top of uh, our, our color. But uh, the problem is that uh, we're still seeing the white area. So we just need to change this to multiply to get rid of the, to, to get rid of the, uh, the white areas. So you can increase uh, the amount of occlusion and you can see how that is giving us uh, the greenish areas around there. And even you can see some green areas popping out in other areas. Uh, but the problem is uh, because our trench is a bit dark, uh, we're not seeing uh, the effects that we are try trying to create. So I'll just increase that a bit, the lightness of that. And uh, if we preview this, again, make sure that uh, uh, this is the final base color. Yeah, so that's what we have. Again, uh, just a reminder, there is a bug in Blender uh, that when you don't have a material applied, when, you, when your materials are not applied to a mesh or any other object uh, in your project, and, and you quit 
blender when you open up the, uh, the project again uh, those materials will be removed uh, so uh, what I usually do is that I add a sphere and assign all the materials uh, that I have in us in the scene uh, to those spheres so that whenever so that if I don't have the materials applied anywhere else I still at least have them applied on these spheres uh, that way uh, if I close blender uh, they don't get deleted the material doesn't get deleted completely so yeah that's something I've already reported the bug and I did a video about it so if you want uh, to help uh, get uh, the bug uh, some more attention you can uh, also uh, report the bug yourself so that uh, it gets the attention and maybe get fixed uh, so yeah in the next story I think we can now uh, look at how to make so the way I made the concrete texture here sorry the uh, these metal text rusted metal texture is the same way I did uh, this brick texture uh, but I'm going to make this brick texture then uh, this you can just extrapolate from from the knowledge you get from here how to do this here so see you in the next story